Okay, thank you guys. Uh, we're gonna have a great lunch today, Christine. Sorry, we're still getting everybody here. Uh, we get 24 hours to uh, thank a lifetime of freedom. So, uh, put that in perspective. Uh, great honor for me to be up here today. So, uh, my name is Vaughn Essel. I'm a nine year Navy veteran. Rick Day, formerly Sergeant Day, U.S. Army. I'm Hank Carter, U.S. Army. Todd London, and um, I served in the United States Navy. Jerry Howard, I was in the United States Air Force. I'm Wilbur Bloom, I served in the U.S. Air Force during the Korean War. Half my time was at the Air Force Academy as a medic in the delivery room. Well, Army, active duty, and Navy uh, made a couple of deployments. Uh, Beirut and Persian Gulf. I was in the Marine Corps from 1982 to 86 and the Army from 86 until current. Um, I was one of those ships that crossed the Colonel Gaddafi's line of death a number of times. My total travel in five years was 80 miles from San Antonio to Austin <laughs> where I was stationed on President Johnson's ranch all five years. Thank you very much. I enjoyed my service. Very honored to be here with uh, all of these wonderful veterans and I'd like to and my gratitude to those currently serving in uniform and my uh, deep appreciation of those generations who preceded mine. I'm really proud to introduce Dorothy Calvert. She was in the Navy Nurse Corps and she was a Lieutenant Commander. Um, here I have Mr. Clark. He was in the Army. He was in World War II as the Field Artillery. He was in the Battle of the Bulge, but he's too nice to say this. And he was awarded the Bronze Star in the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, Colonel Hokinson again is a Kaiser resident. Uh, he is a native of Happy Valley, California, who now resides here in Kaiser, Oregon. In 2005, Colonel Hokinson attended the National Security Fellowship Program at Harvard University in Cambridge, Mass., uh, for his senior war college. In 2006, he returned to Oregon and deployed with the 41st Brigade Combat Team for Afghanistan as the Chief of Staff to the Combined Task Force uh, Phoenix. Five. And in June of 2007, the task force was demobilized. He became the deputy brigade commander for the 41st Brigade Combat Team. Um, and currently, he is the commander of that unit in Iraq. And, uh, Good afternoon, everyone, and greetings uh, from southern Iraq. I'm Dan Hokinson, a uh, very proud member of the Kaiser community. And I'm here actually broadcasting from the birthplace of civilization in Iraq. Uh, if you look to my left, uh, just over my right shoulder on the horizon, you'll see the ziggurat of Ur, one of the oldest uh, structures on the face of the earth. It's uh, well over 4,000 years old, and it is part of uh, the first city on the face of the earth, uh, the city of Ur. And also within that, uh, only about 100 meters east of the ziggurat is the, uh, the home of the prophet Abraham. Uh, Iraq here is a, a little bit different environment from Oregon. Uh, in the month of August, we had a high of 141. And I will tell you that is extremely hot. Um, and today uh, we're already in the month of November and our high is uh, 92. Uh, kind of as an interesting note, it was three months before I saw my first cloud here, uh, but fortunately we're starting to see those regularly now. Okay. I'd like to spend a couple minutes with you discussing uh, the mission that we're performing here in Iraq as the uh, 41st Infantry Brigade Combat Team of the Oregon Army National Guard. Uh, there's 3,300 soldiers here in our task force. Uh, 2,700 of them are from Oregon, and they come from every community within the state of Oregon as our armories are dispersed throughout the state. And I would also tell you that we've got uh, great representation from the community of Kaiser. Uh, 37 soldiers in our task force are, come from the Kaiser area. Our mission here is primarily convoy security for the western, southern, and central part of Iraq, roughly two-thirds of the country. Uh, we provide security for all movements in and around those parts of the country. And I would tell you, in the past four months, we've driven over one and a half million miles. Uh, we also provide base defense here in Iraq uh, for the Victory Base Complex in Baghdad, as well as two other remote locations in western and southern Iraq. We also uh, get involved with the communities here. Uh, locally in southern Iraq, we do what are called civil military operations with uh, some of the schools in the local areas, uh, providing supplies to the children there, um, doing the best we can to help uh, see progress within the country here. I'd also like to take a moment today on Veterans Day to uh, remember those uh, fallen comrades that we've had during our deployment so far. Uh, sadly, we've had three soldiers pay the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, Taylor Marks from Monmouth, Oregon, uh, Earl Warner from Amboy, Washington, and Joseph Gallegos from Taos, New Mexico. 
I'd also like to, uh, to recognize the three combat wounded soldiers that we have in our task force as well. Uh, Jeremy Pierce from Staten, uh, who lost his left leg and part of his right leg, uh, currently undergoing uh, treatment in Walter Reed. And by the way, he's doing exceptionally well, uh, recovering very rapidly, and he's doing extremely well with his prosthetics and uh, learning to walk again. Also, Reed Walsh from Redmond and Michael Kelly from South Carolina. I'd like to highlight a, a couple of things that uh, our soldiers bring from their communities. Uh, they bring not only their soldier and civilian skills with them, but they also bring probably the greatest aspect is their sense of community. And not only the sense of the community, but the fact that they reflect each of their communities. Everyone here comes from a diverse background, and it comes into a great benefit in an environment like this. Not only that, but everyone brings with them a desire to really make a difference over the year that they're here. And you see that every day um, from their operations late into the night, early in the morning, and the desire to do the best they can and help this country get on its feet so that eventually all of our soldiers can leave here and, and stay back home for a little while. One of the things I'd also like to, uh, to touch on is uh, some of the great things that our soldiers are going to bring back to their communities after this deployment. Uh, not only do they bring the, the diverse experiences that they have here, but also a, a greater maturity. Uh, for many of those, they'll have a lot of responsibility here, and they'll also get to see some things that they probably would have never otherwise seen in their lifetime. Also in that, it instills in a lot of them a great sense of public service, uh, not only to come back and be part of their communities, but also to be involved in leadership within their communities. And I would tell you, every single one of us here is very appreciative of the fact that we have the ability to grow up in Oregon, and especially areas like Kaiser. One thing I would like to personally highlight is uh, the great support we've gotten from Oregon, uh, not only individuals, but communities, our elected officials, and especially the leaders within the state of Oregon. Uh, the governor, a congressional delegation to include our two U.S. senators, and uh, General Reese, the adjutant general for the state of Oregon. Uh, great support at Camp Roberts, California for the month we spent there, for the two months that we spent at Fort Stewart, Georgia, and we continue to great, get great support here in Iraq and Kuwait. On a personal note, I'd like to say hi to all of my friends, which includes every one of you in the room there today. It's hard to believe that a year has passed uh, since I was last with you on Veterans Day of last year. Uh, a lot has taken place since then. Uh, we spent 30 days in Camp Roberts, California, uh, two months in Fort Stewart, Georgia, uh, about a half a month in Kuwait, and we've been here in Iraq for over four and a half months already. Uh, we're scheduled to be back home around April, May of next year, and I can tell you I cannot wait to get back to my family, to my friends, and the Kaiser community. I would tell you in all the locations that we have been, the common theme all of our soldiers say is uh, it is the Oregon Appreciation Tour. Uh, being in all these different locations, we realize just how good we have it, not only in Oregon, but in our individual communities, and Kaiser is a great example of that. Uh, thank you once again for your great support. I look forward to seeing all of you uh, when I get back to Oregon. Thank you. Play the tax work because when you remember those, you're an officer life.